Everyone has that one game, that game that they played when they were younger, figured out all its secrets, whether it be COD or Pokemon or something like that. You always think back to when you played that game and have a smile on your face as you reminisce about when you were younger. Now mine's a bit different, and you'll probably know this game if you're around my age and you're from probably Ireland. Skylanders. Specifically, Skylanders Giants. I remember getting it when I was only five years old on my Wii and just playing it so much. I wasn't very good at it, but I played it and I played and I played until I couldn't really play it anymore because I got tired of it and the next one came out. So about a few months ago, I was thinking, why don't I just re-download that game? I'm sure it's on PC. Probably is. Then I found a Reddit thread that said why it was not PC. Some people had gone into the portal USB port in the original Skylanders on PC game and messed with the character's metadata to make them better. So because Activision didn't want this, they stopped producing it on PC. So I had to go through the massive long process of finding these parts that I'm going to show on screen, buying them, and then getting them delivered, which took months. This one took over a month, it was pain. So I booted it up and I saw it worked. So I started playing and suddenly all these memories came flooding back. All of these memories of characters that I'd forgotten, levels that I hadn't played in years. And I just thought, why did I grow tired of this? So now that I've talked about the nostalgic elements, I'm gonna give you a detailed review on why Skylanders Giants is a very good game. The first thing we see is the main villain. Chaos! <coughs> Sorry, you just have to say his name like that. In a toy store named Super Toy Planet, just being awoken from his fate at the end of the last game of being trapped on Earth. He is able to move freely in this world, and hears figurines of the Skylanders. He taunts them about not being able to move. He says his abilities to move freely on Earth is because of his portal master powers, and then is interrupted by his servant Glumshanks. Glumshanks explains that Earth is home to the portal masters, you, and Chaos! Alright, I'll, I'll stop doing that. Finds a portal and uses it, as he is a portal master himself, to be transported back to Skyland. We then cut to white as we're met with this sexy beast. Look at this man. He is Eon, the god of Skylands. God damn it, why can't other gods send me on magical quests to stop a big headed child? And I mean big headed in both senses of the word. Back on track. I'll play what he says so you can understand. Welcome to Skylands, a magical world of wonder and adventure, protected by the greatest heroes ever known the Skylanders. It had long been my duty to watch over the Skylanders and lead them, but this task has been given to you. He then alerts us that we found a giant, and that the giants have been lost for centuries, which is why we were picked specifically. We are told that the Archeans were a race of ancient robots that lived 10,000 years ago, and we are then transported to the first level. Level 1 starts off with Eon explaining that the Archean Empire had enslaved the race of Mabu to build shrines for them, but this tyrannical rule is what would drive the Skylanders to destroy the Archean Empire. You are then taught the mechanics that giants use, like lifting and throwing rocks, you are taught what jump pads are after one was hidden under a rock, you are also taught how cannons work and how large cube shaped objects are pushable and are able to be walked across. You find your first chest and then a Mabu named Norticus who is being attacked by bone chompies. He then alerts the other Mabu that the Skylanders are here to help. We then meet Gigantus, a large rocky creature who teaches us how giants have different powers to the other Skylanders because of how big they are. You then jump into the hungry depths and are trapped in a chompy pit which should be difficult except for two factors. One, when I was younger I maxed out tree wrecks, so now he one-shots almost everything. Two, 
Chombies are just really weak. You are then met with an Archean Jouster, who are just one shot. Afterwards, you make your way outside to see a giant Archean Conquertron, who is keeping the Mabu enslaved. For some reason, he's on a platform that is held up by three chains, so you have to remove them. After getting the first, you start running towards the second. Now here's my issue. He destroys the scaffolding that is blocking your path, allowing you to break his second chain. After breaking the second chain, he should be dangling on now by only one, which you can see he is. His platform is fine. What the fuck? Anyways, you then destroy his last chain and free the Mabu. Well done. After looking at the quests for the level for two seconds, I can say that Activision put a 420 joke in the kid's game. This is why it's my favorite game of all time. We then get the best cutscene in video game history. Watch it and tell me I'm wrong. You see, Portal Master, that was only the beginning of a great battle. For the invasion of the Archean Empire had already spread far and wide. To truly stop them, the giants had to face the Robot King and remove the source of his power, the Iron Fist of Arcus. Fist of Arcus, or a king to command them, the evil robot legions fell silent. But this victory carried a heavy price. The giants were swept from Skyland, where they have not been seen until now. Also, the Iron Fist of Arcus is the most iconic gaming artifact ever. I'm not wrong. Apparently, our finding of the giants has summoned Eon, and something evil is stirring. We then meet the best side character in gaming history. Let me give you a brief synopsis of his character. The best pilot in all of Skylands, with boom as his catchphrase. And he's voiced by fucking... Kronk from Emperor's New Groove. That's right. Oh uh, yeah, it's all it's coming all come together, together, man. Is a side character in this game. A fairly prevalent one, might I add. Oh, might I also say, he is also the voice actor for Joe fucking Swanson. Now by contract, Big Man Hugo then tells us that there is a hermit in the Outlands who saw something interesting and wants us to investigate. But we need to pick up some spare parts for the broken ship first. We land the Dread Yacht on the Junkyard Isles to pick up an important part. After busting through a couple walls and killing more than a couple chompies, you obtain the Octophone Music Player. Yes, that was all for a jukebox, but Flynn does have some banging tunes. We move on to the next of the Junkyard Isles and encounter a Bark Demon, which I then two-shot, as you know, Max Skylander. You then go into this house and find a bomb, because those are just lying around, you know. Anyway. Exiting the house, you actually go to this little island and get this key for the door. After murdering low graphics children, you get the opportunity to murder more low graphics children? Oh, but there's a demon tree also this time. After doing more of that, you find a well put together fellow named Oric. 
Eric? He says he wants to join our crew. In exchange for that, he will give us the engine for only one gold coin. I don't know, but he strikes quite a bargain, so... Welcome aboard, buddy. The next aisle gives us an upgrade to our navigation system by stealing the compass of ultimate finding, but it is also what they worship. Stealing time. After many trials and tribulations, we finally had the compass of ultimate finding as we set sail to find the hermit. We land at the docks and are faced with more murder to commit. Let's go. You collect a key and then open the next door. Even more murder. We then encounter Brock, the thick-headed leader of Rumbletown. He sends more troops at you, which you promptly run alive. After getting one key, we see my cameo in the game. Haha, <laughs> very funny. After heading back outside, seeing lots of troops are going, I'm done with your shit, I ran directly past them and opened the door. Something I forgot to say earlier is the game's use of puzzles is amazing. They invented a new type of mechanic for each level, which really makes the game refreshing and entertaining. Brock then sees that we have made it this far, pisses his pants, and destroys the bridge, so we have to find a new way to get to the home. After doing what Skylanders would consider playing with Lego, you arrive at another battle gate and proceed to wreck everyone's shit. You then arrive at the arena for the first boss fight of the game, and I would love this if not for a few reasons. Firstly, Brock is hyped up during this entire fight, and yet next level he is just a normal enemy. Secondly, once Brock starts heating up the center, some of the enemies are so fucking stupid that they'll run through it. And finally, in my battle against Brock, I was able to knock him off, only to glitch himself back onto the platform. Brock then says how all he wanted was to be liked, and then... Was that wrong? I don't think it is. At this point, I felt quite sad for Brock. But then, Big Man Ermit the Hermit comes through with the... Wrong answer! And kicks this man in the head. Yo... This man's a fucking legend. After missing the time requirements by one second, bruh, we land back on the dreadyard, and Ermit expresses his fear of clouds. We then flash back to Ermit writing his book on the dangers of clouds, and just as he's finishing it, out of the sky falls chaos. The static electricity from his fall from a thunderstorm awakens an ancient Archean robot that calls chaos his new master. We then end the flashback and hear that he's heading towards an Archean vault. Just as we're about to head over to the frozen wastelands, Flynn seriously foreshadows some shit. Great! And, uh, as long as our engine doesn't take a direct hit from that lightning, we should be fine. Man, what kind of clairvoyant drugs is this man taking and where can I find them? We make an emergency stop at the nearest place, which turns out to be... <laughs> Flynn admits to having been there before and says that people here don't like him very much. The pirates allow Callie's request to come ashore and ask if they can help with fixing their ship. The pirate wolf thing, Bowers, says that they'll have to pay them in pirate ships to fix the dread yacht, and you have to earn them through playing Skystones, a game the pirates like to play. This is what I meant earlier by amazing puzzles. They invented a whole new game for this level. After making your way through some enemies, you meet Blobbers, who says you have to fix the bridge by patching a hole at the end. Once you do so, he says that he forgot to say that he lost the key to the locked gate in the Skystones game, and that you could win it back. You have to play a pirate named Fangs in Skystones to get the key back. Of course, I absolutely demolished him because I'm too cracked at Skystones. He then gives me his best Skystone, which he forgot to use. After you go outside, you find an enemy that is the exact same as Brock, which really takes away from the achievement of your victory against Brock. After using the key, you enter the promenade and find three more Brock replicas. What the fuck? After killing them all, you need to use your giant strength to pull in the ship with a chain in what is known in the game as a feat of strength. There have been more before now, but I haven't mentioned them because they're not necessary, and also, the temptation to make feet jokes would be too much. I already made one at Tobiter's house, and I don't want any more. After firing the cannon on the ship, the gate is opened. We then meet a pirate named Wolf, who tells us to take some Skystones from a bandit in the jail. I then demolished him, because I'm too cracked at this game. Sheesh! He gave me the blaster troll. Wolf then says, I can enter Pirate Island, so I do. 
You're given the goal to get to the top and play the best Sky Stones player. After some brief murder, you get the key for the gate to the best Sky Stones player's house. His name? Dreadbeard. He tells us that he's looking for Flynn and that Flynn owes him five gold pieces, but instead, he'll take it from you. He releases a large amount of troops who instantly get annihilated. He then releases more from the other side who also die instantly. He finally agrees to the Sky Stones game, which I accept. He gets his shit slapped out of him and gives me the Archean Jouster card. We then are about to leave the carnival, but Bowers figures out that Flynn is himself, and we quickly escape Bowers McPotato graphics to call him by his full name. Blobbers then tells us that he was supposed to come with us, but looks disappointed as we leave without him. This definitely will not lead to anything as a dramatic audio stinger plays as we zoom in on Blobbers, but meanwhile, evil is making action toward his plans. <laughs> Excellent work, robot! Those trees never knew what hit them. Thank you, Lord Chaos. Thank you very much. Excuse me, Master? Not now, Glumshanks. I'm busy. Uh, it's just that, uh, Lord Chaos, uh, now that you're back and we've got this robot, uh, what are we gonna do? It's simple, Glumshanks. Robot! Tell him! Lord Chaos is going to the secret vault of Archean Secrets, which, as everyone knows, you need to be an Archean Conquertron to enter. Or, better yet, have an Archean Conquertron! <laughs> Wait, secret vault of secrets? Yes, because inside the vault, there is a map. A map to the lost city of Argus, where Lord Chaos will find the Iron Fist of Argus, which he will use to raise the robot army and then make himself king of all Skylands. Isn't that marvelous? Did you hear that, Glumshanks? King. Although, I prefer Emperor. Got that, robot? Why, of course. Emperor Chaos. And may I say, that suits you well. Oh, you may. Think of it. Once I have the Iron Fist, all of Skylands will bow down before me. Chaos! Yes. All hail Emperor Chaos. K-A-O-S. <laughs> now back to the main story. Dreadbeard stowed away on our ship and is now here to play Skystones anytime. We arrive at the frozen wastelands of Glacier Gully to get Ermit's frozen robot. Wait, what? Ermit has a fucking robot? How? The robot has frozen over and the ice ogres now think it's their great evil ice master. Fucking idiots. We then meet the ghost of the machine who tells us we can melt the ice with lasers. After we do so, an ogre named Noodles says they were for the great evil ice master. After that, you proceed to melt more ice walls to get through the level. Eventually, you find a large series of ice pits, and have to use the gaining momentum to move through them. After collecting keys from each side, after getting all of them, you have to remove ice walls one more time before melting the Archean robot. We then head back to the ship, where the robot flies alongside us, and tells us he will take us to the Archean vault when the captain gives the word. We arrived at the vault before Chaos, but, and this is a massive plot hole, I don't understand why Machine Ghost doesn't just fly to the end of the valley. Anyway, the actual vault is submerged in water, so we have to lower the dam. There's only one problem, these fucking Archean Kamikaze bombs won't leave me the fuck alone. So after you deal with those, you can activate these generator things, and allow you to get through the other side. Not much to say in this chapter, other than, you 1v1 a giant robot as a giant robot. 
Oh wait, I forgot about this. You get to 2v1 some robots. Let's go, best chapter. So then, Chaos swoops in at the end and steals the map. When he does, he traps Machine Ghost under some rubble, and Machine Ghost seemingly dies. Now I'm fucking pissed, you small fucking idiot douchebag child. I will murder your nan, you bitch. And Chaos escapes, but plot twist, the map gets broken by the robot, so Chaos thinks he's lost it. Then, he has an idea, so he asks the robot to take him back to his home. We're ready to head over to Chaos's childhood home, but before we can, an Archean security copter shoots at our hull, and we are forced to make an emergency landing. Again? Ah yes, Willikin Village. Nightmare fuel for five-year-olds. This was the fucking creepiest shit for five-year-olds. If you mention this out in the playground to people, they would get fucking shivers, because of course they would. They are fucking ventriloquist dolls that come alive in another fucking dimension. Overall though, this level uses that mechanic really well. Let me explain how. Let me list the countless ways that switching the dimension changes different things. Firstly, and most importantly, furniture that was built out of cardboard became real. This allows you to break down walls that usually you couldn't. Secondly, chompies turn into Enfuego chompies, and vice versa. Thirdly, these discs do damage or heal you depending on which dimension you're in. And finally, and probably most obviously, the Willikin are able to move in the, as does described in the game, the Willikin world. So, to describe this level, you arrive at Willikin Village and see a bunch of wooden dolls. Then, after accidentally using the dimension shifter, they come alive and tell you about how the next town over do ship parts and about the chompy mage who has been terrorizing them. You then head around the cliffside and arrive at the next town. You then have to fight the chompy mage, and this combines all of the dimension swapping aspects over the level you've just played through. Having to swap between worlds to avoid the damage cones. Also, before you say, Seraphina confirms that it's another world. After making the chompy mage eat his own Enfuego chompies, you leave Willikin after they repair your ship. Also, Chaos is apparently the creator of the Willikin, and he has a force field troll home security system. And also, Seraphina is now on the ship and can fucking move. Here's why it's such a big deal. When we arrived, the Willikin couldn't move, but yet, Seraphina stays on the Dreadyacht, she can move, so that means that we arrived in the normal world and left in the Willikin world. They play it off as a prank they play, but then why would they say that the Chompy Mage travel into a different world and they almost caught him? What the fuck? Anyway, moving on from the existential crisis that all the rest of Skylanders franchise takes place in a different dimension to the first one, and the six chapters of the second one, Seraphina then reveals they gave us guns, so that's great, but now we have a home security firm to break into. You fly towards the entrance as you look at these ominous square tiled towers of evil. Troll Home Security is probably one of the most defended buildings in all of Skylands. It's cannons with large explosive projectiles being deadly to most who try to infiltrate the grounds. And once you manage to land, it's not smooth sailing from there either. The well guarded fortress of Home Security is chock full of enemies, and the only way to get through some of the walls is with their own explosive. But if you make it past them, you have successfully made it to the first tower. Good job, it only gets harder from here. Using a mix of jump pads and balance floors, you make it to the top of the tower and have to make it past the big cannons by either destroying them or dodging the attacks. After destroying the first few, you have to dodge the ones that are planted in the wall. After spending some time analyzing the patterns, I made a leap of faith. I watched and took my chance. Did I make it? Of course I did. Who do you take me for, a video game scrub? Though I did get pretty low on health. So we advanced up to where the shield generator was and absolutely demolished whoever was up there. We then made it quite clear to Flynn that we are taking no prisoners when it comes to chaos. I'm still pissed after you did my boy machine ghost like that. But now, after ages of trying to foil his plans, and taking out countless henchmen, we're taking the fight to KO. After Chaos uses memory reading tech on Glumshanks to find the map to the lost city of Arcus, he starts making preparations to build a giant drill down to the lost city. Meanwhile, we close in on the location of Chaos's castle, and drop in right outside the front door. We are told by some Willikin 
the large door is opened by a button, and that they made a secret passageway to it. Once you reach the end of the secret passage, you find a battle gate with more enemies for you to murder. Once you do so, a willikin named Copeland tells you that you have to unlock the two locks to the big door to progress. So you do, with lots of puzzles and traps from past levels, as well as buzz saws that you have to perfectly time to get past. After climbing past lots of trolls rolling barrels down the slopes, you have to beat another willikin named Butterworth at Skystones to unlock the gate to unlock one of two of the door's locks. Damn, this level's a lot of locks. Anyways, win Skystones, Butterworth unlocks the gate, you unlock door. Simple, you go to the other side, Oh no, buzzsaw, I say before easily clearing the buzzsaws. You get the lasers to shoot into this, and there you have it, the door is open. You walk through to find these falling paths that you have to time it perfectly to get past. After crossing those, you find Chaos sitting on his throne, and you have to do an arena battle. After that, you have to fight Brute, and after annihilating him, you escape to try to find Chaos' big drill that he's making. But before you can find that, something attacks. <laughs> Suddenly, you're attacked by ghost pirates on flying ships. Flynn tells you to stop the pirates as they board the Dreadyard. After defeating them, you head down to the lower deck to use your guns on the oncoming ships. Once you destroy them, a new wave of enemies board the deck and you have to defeat them too. A battleship arrives with tons of bulky troops on board. You kill them as well. Once that's over and done with, you head back down to the gun to shoot down some more ships. After that, you come to the main deck to see an even bigger battleship coming towards you. Flynn decides to loop above it and tells you to jump down. After landing on the Spectral Dreadnought, you have to blow up two cannons. You head down to the lower deck of the ship and take out the enemies below. Then a battle gate unlocks and you can head into the cabins of the ship. And by cabins, I mean massive fucking crushing pistons, because why the fuck would a ghost ship need an actual functioning interior? Anyways, after I saw how badly Tree Rex was getting crushed, I switched out to my boy Spyro because he's small as a dash attack. So after Spyro obliterated that area, you head out into the final area where the massive cannon is. And after seeing how low health Tree Rex is, and how weak Spyro is, I switched out to Hothead, my favourite motorbike boy. Once you murder that cannon, making the ship shoot itself, you jump off the Spectral Dreadnought and onto the Dread Yacht, and make preparations to head down to the Drill Factory. We land on the rig and are alerted by the enslaved Malkin of the Drill. The Drill is sentient, and even worse, it sings. I will make it my mission to kill this fucking bastard. You know the drill by now. <laughs> huh? Kill enemies, solve puzzles, blah blah blah. You make it through the level to the singing drill. I'm not going to lie, I was doing this guy dirty. Listen to this man's fucking bars. He's literally singing over his level speed. Ignoring that though, I murdered him. You land down on the mountain to find that the village has been overrun by creeps, and we have to help them to find the oracle that will lead us to the lost city of Arcus. After some puzzle solving and murder, you reach the other side of the island where you have a large arena brawl against Pipsqueak's forces. I'm so glad that this fire isn't burning me alive, you know, because I'm a fucking TREE. After killing those losers, you face off against Pipsqueak himself, who pisses his pants after getting hit once and runs away. He then summons his Shadow Duke to take care of the rest of the battle. Safe to say he gets murdered. Barnsey then says he will help us find this all-seeing oracle, so he comes back onto our ship. After Barnsey describes the oracle as a feeling, not a place or time, we are told to concentrate. Then we arrive at this strange looking place with an octopus looking creature floating in front of us. He tells us his name is Octavius and that he is the oracle. He will give us the coordinates of the lost city if we answer his test. The first one is the trial of courage. Which are you more scared of? Epic spiders because they also exist in the real world. Unlike fucking chompies who are so stupid little pricks, little waste of space. Then, as we go through the trials and the oracle takes notes, he builds a profile on you that should be great for his research. After you complete all his trials, he tells you that he will give Flynn the coordinates of the lost city, return you to your ship, and give you an Archean gyrocopter to infiltrate the lost city of Arcus. And with that, the crew is ready. 
Once you prepare to head in, we see a cutscene of Chaos finding the Iron Fist of Arcus. Once he fully steps inside, he gets transformed into Robo Chaos and is ready to lead the Archean robots to conquer Skylands. We fly in the entrance to the Lost City on the Gyrocopter, and we hop in. You have to make it through multiple doors, and then finally, after a long, arduous process, we arrive at the city. The Lost City of Arcus is a dark and damp place, full of creatures of the dark. Its low sunlight allows very little to survive there. The only thing that can survive there long term are the almost zombie-like Drog and the Archean robots. When you arrive at the Grand Castle door, you have to use lasers on both sides. Once the two lasers are in place, an Archean robot consciousness tells you that you will be sent back to the ship to prepare and to contact him when you are ready. You land down on the platform in the palace, and make your way through conveyor belt traps, enemies, and walls that can only be broken through explosions. After all of those, you arrive at a bridge and start to cross it, but once you do, Robo Chaos emerges, destroying your way back. He then starts to monologue about how awesome he is. This fucking dickhead. You then have to run away from him, eventually reaching his avalanche button. Once you press it, an avalanche falls on him, and a teleporter appears. But Chaos re-emerges and destroys the teleporter, saying we cannot escape. But then, out of nowhere, Ermit arrives with Machine Ghost, and they start to fight Chaos, who summons his Archean henchmen. We then start a fight, in which you have to attack the Iron Fist of Arcus whenever you get the chance. After a long amount of fighting, and Robo Chaos bashing in my boy Machine Ghost's head way too many times, we win, and Robo Chaos is defeated. Once the smoke clears, Chaos tries to get the Iron Fist back, but it is escaping. He is then picked up by the Archean Conquertron before he can get the Iron Fist back, and they fly away. But the Conquertron is about to shut off, as Chaos ignores the Conquertron's countdown to shutdown, and they crash into another island. As we cut back to Eon, who outros this game perfectly. So in the end, the Skylanders win, because of course they do. It's a fucking kids game. So my final message to you, dear viewer, is that, like Chaos, what you give unto others is what others give unto you. So with that advice, in mind, like and subscribe. Yes, that is a shameless plug, but I don't care. Like and subscribe, or your nan will be eaten by your granddad. I don't make the rules, I just heavily enforce them. And now, as I bid you farewell, I thank you for joining me on this journey through the nostalgic masterpiece of Skylanders Giants.